Hey guys, um, Kenny and I are bringing you another um, kind of educational piece or webinar. Um, and it's it's what we've been calling the four piece plus one. Um, some of this is about, you know, do you have a product? Um, if you have a product or a product idea in mind, is it viable? How do you go to market with it? Um, and then we have an approach for how we kind of start to think about um, you know, where products go, how to think about them, and then what to do with them when you get to market. Uh, and so we thought we'd walk through that today. We we seem, we've been covering this a lot, I think, with brands. So this is kind of a super relevant topic. I think a lot of this came out of the last two shows we've done, mm -hmm. where the old school, just basic four Ps of sort of marketing seem to have gone sideways or away for lack maybe of a better word i yeah. think people focus on a couple of the p's really well but i think they forget some of the other ones so i think phil and i were getting a little concerned that it might be just time to pull it back the basics just a little more and just kind of hone in on all the p's yeah yeah right? okay so so let's go um in case you are watching this you don't know who we are um, we are a podcast that, um, you know, is really passionate about CPG and Canadian retail in particular. Yeah. We love the stories that come from entrepreneurs and Canadian entrepreneurs and their journey to success or not. Um, and we have been doing this a long time, I feel like. So um, in any case, check out the podcast, This Commerce Life, if you haven't watched it. Um, we also do this stuff. We do a lot of retail insights, um, what it takes to succeed in the Canadian landscape. We don't know everything, but we've been around a long time. So we've screwed up a lot of things, uh, yeah, which, is, you know, <laughs> which is probably where more this comes from is, is, you know, when you screw shit up, you, you, um, learn a whole lot more. Um, and then lastly is we are around, we're, we're available to help um we are temporary temporary strategic help we have experience uh like i've said we screwed up a lot of things in our lifetime and so we have the experience we think to help companies fix and grow um and then we're experienced buyers um kenny more than me but we've got both got buying experience and then we've got sales strategy we've got marketing we're operators um done a, little bit, done a little bit of everything yeah 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 um and then lastly we are here to work ourselves out of a job. So if you have um, something that you need help with, we're not here to stick around and, and collect a retainer. We're here to help you fix something and then get out. Um, and then, you know, we're really someone that you can hire to bring experience to your team that that your team might not have. So, um, you know, kind of um, pretty skilled labor pretty quick. I think. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Anyway, a lot, this is us. a lot of it, listen to the podcast. Um, listen to the webinars and you've probably got enough to get you going, but if you do need some extra help yeah. We're around. Yeah. Um, okay. And then, uh, okay. So this is us. Um, let's jump into the four P. So the four P's are, are here, product price, place, promotion. And then we think the plus one is people. Um, and we'll explain that when we get there, but, but we do think that this is overlooked a lot. Um, and then the order in which you do it really does matter um you know to you, we'll show you that as well um so we'll, we'll jump in and, and be quick about the first couple of sections uh the first one is product and uh you know the, you have an idea you have something that you want to build you have something that um you think brings value to the consumer or help you make money however you see that fit um, we're kind of not here to do that so we will certainly give you suggestions on what makes for um, you know a viable product, but we are generally not kind of product innovators that way. Hey, Kenny. No, typically what we do is we take a look at the idea you've got, and then we'll try to help you potentially make um, retail sense of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. you might already be there. You might you might listen to yep. this and think well, I've already done that. Well, then yep. good for you. That's that's yeah. That's we awesome. we don't we don't that's typically spend a lot of time really in well. product innovation. It's kind of not our thing. So. Um, but yeah, anyway, so there's product. So that's the first P. Um, the second one we talk a lot about a lot. Um, and so, you know, if you kind of work left to right on the slide, um, you know, if you're B2C, you're 
costing structure is fairly straightforward. Um, so you have COGS, you have a gross margin in the middle, and then you have a retail. This is typically either something you might sell online or that you go to farmer's market, sell direct to a consumer. Um, the, the designation we always, you know, kind of say is you, you've got to take some time out and stop and think about it is if you have a product and you just want to sell it at farmer's markets or direct to consumer, the oval on the left is great for you. But what we always want you to do left is for you time so out. Here. Yeah. So, you know, oh, and you then start there. Yeah. That's your, that's the challenge, Phil. Yeah. It's great. I mean, actually the oval is, is if the, if you do awesome. the oval, yeah. you're going to crush it. Yeah. You're yeah. going to crush it. Typically yeah. what we do is the two times oval. Yeah. What we'll do is, is what we're trying to show you is, is that's the one you should be doing. And if you don't leave to the left, to the right, you never have to worry about it. You will make right. tons of great margin and be able to really have some fun with your product. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the model on the right, more complicated um, cost of goods, COGS is at the bottom. Um, and then what we've done is kind of added in some really common layers, right? So um, just keep in mind that if you are a brand already out there, you'll know that we in fact have left out all sorts of things at the top in terms of with a retailer agreement. But what we try to do is just break out what this looks like. So you got cost of goods, you will probably need a distributor, you probably need a broker, or you'll need a combo of the two. Right. And so every time you add a layer, you know, you're adding extra cost before you get to the red dotted line, which would be, um, you know, kind of the cost that you would sell this to a retailer for before a retailer runs their margin numbers. Right. You know, right. so we, we aren't going to spend a lot of time on this because we, we do talk about this a lot. Kenny and I get very excited about this. And so if we spend well, any more this time, where, on that, this is either yeah. going to be where this is where your money is. Yeah. So no matter what, whatever your thing is, and if you do notice it on the left again, at cogs at a dollar, try to hit a four dollar retail. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you can't do that, what we're telling you now is if you can only get to a two, the right hand side is really, in essence, probably near impossible to do. Yeah, it's out of reach for you. Yeah. So what we're trying to say is, if you can't set up to the left and you never go right, even better. Yeah. But if you're gonna go right you have to build in yeah all those percentages off and we've yeah. lifted up you know we didn't put the listing fees on the co-op and the terms etc in so there's a lot of costs involved in retail yeah that's really what we want to make sure of we have another podcast we have another webinar on this you can go watch that one it gives you one yeah detail. yeah and you understand why we got which where we got okay so anyway price um i'm proud of us kenny we didn't get too excited well, it's hard not to because this one drives me nuts but that's okay yeah Keep yeah. Okay. So yeah, let's, let's keep going. So, so before we get to the next one, um, you know, we, we know we, we've seen a lot of brands, right? So we see how this works is you, you kind of have an idea. We, everybody, including us, we we done this. yeah, you dream big, you think about, wow, I got this thing. It can go anywhere. It can, it should go everywhere is really the thought process behind this um you know and and then we immediately start dreaming about where could this be could this be in a national grocer could it be in a national drugstore could it be in a national mass retailer um and you start thinking about market share um you know which all ladders up to the same thing right which is we want to feel we want to build something that feels relevant we want to be successful and we want something impactful in the marketplace right, right? um so all of these things we want you to do um, but the next key, um, in order to get to this middle, which is what everybody dreams about, you have to start in a different place, right? And so we cover price, uh, when it comes to place, we would like you to park your big dreams over here on the right, but you need to start here on the left, um, and start thinking about where your product might fit on a shelf. I think if you, if we, if we want to, we can even maybe just tell people, I mean, really motivated a lot of this presentation. Yep. Um, it is the last couple of times we've been out to shows, we've no, we've, we've seen some incredible products, some yeah. incredible ideas. Really, yeah. yeah. Um, we have seen a lot of pricing, um, issues. Yep. Um, and then, the, but the, the, even the next big one is this one. 
is that you hit, if you, you know, so how many times have we asked people, oh my God, that's pretty cool. Where do you want to be? And they'll start walking you through the store and they might pick three different places yeah. that they think they could be or the idea, well, we can put it here. And then maybe we can get double placement or something. You're thinking, don't, don't, don't dream outside of where you really need to be. And then if you get other things, awesome. But I think one thing you and I have noticed is that nobody, not nobody, fewer and fewer seem to be focused on where it needs to go in a store. Correct. As much as where they think it should go. And they shouldn't go anywhere. Well, it's also because, you know, we, having been buyers, you longer than me, but you know that buyers also have their own lanes, right? And so there's kind of like when you, when a consumer walks a store, you don't see those things. You see things on a grocery list that you need to buy. When a buyer sees a store, the buyer only sees the, well, it, the buyer mainly sees their own aisles, right? Like things, categories and aisles that they want to be in. And then, you know, like as marketers and people that work brands, you should be thinking about those things because, you know, I see buyer categories, right? And so if I'm in a buyer category with one buyer, I'm not getting to another buyer. Um, I need a new UPC code. I need... <laughs> I need, well, I mean, you you know, a new pitch. I need a new package. I need, some, you know, um, yeah. Well, let's say, let's say you're, let's say you're a juice. Yeah. Right. A juice could go, a juice could go in, in, into, uh, into the produce world. Yeah. A little different in there, but it yep. could go in there as you're shopping produce. You could pick up a juice. Mm -hmm. A juice could go, whether it's shelf stable or not, could go into a fridge. Mm -hmm. So you could be in a refrigerated set, whether it's by the front checkouts again, toward the back, maybe in the dairy or wherever juices are kept. Um, you could go on a shelf in center store, right? Yeah. So, and depending on where you go first can dictate whether you're going to be super successful in that set or not. So, I mean, I, and I know this has happened. So I've had people, listen, I couldn't get to the juice guy. I couldn't, I couldn't get, he never picked up his call. Yeah. She never picked up the call. Yeah. So you know what? I know that the produce guys were looking or the produce people. Also, yeah. you know, looking the produce for innovation or whatever. Yep. Looking for a couple of juice or they had some juice. I went to them. Yeah. You know what? They said, yes. I think that's fantastic. Good for you. You're in. Yeah. Right. The question was, is if it gets really successful, do you stay there? Oh, no, no. We'll, we'll talk and see if we can get the other set. And you're thinking, talk to who? The other buyer? Because the other buyer is going to sit there and say, listen, I'm not going to give you my shelf space. You're already selling. I also, I also can't elsewhere. touch it, right? I also can't touch it because, you know, let's say Kenny and I run two different sets. If I've got this and you go talking to Kenny, first, I'm going to be angry about it, right? Because Actually. your numbers belong to me. And so what the F are you doing talking to another buyer? And then two is if I'm not angry, because I really like Kenny, I'd still tell Kenny, listen, man, don't think about poaching my product, right? Like I, I, I get what's right for the store, but this is not right for me. So either we figure out how to make this right or I'm, I'm not switching it. Like I'm not moving categories, right? Like it's, it's not an easy one. It can to, be done. It correct. can. Correct. But it, it just it's a not unheard of. Yeah. uphill battle. Yeah. And the other part, Phil, like we've talked about, it, we had people said, let's say you put it into the set because it was easy to talk to the produce people versus the center store. Let's say it doesn't do well there. Yeah. Do you not think the center store people can see those numbers? Yeah. yeah. So when you come and say, well, you know what? It was really in the wrong spot. It should have been in yours. Well, whatever. But it wasn't. And I'm going to tell you now, I know for a fact now, I can see it didn't really sell over there. Why mm -hmm. is it going to sell with me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And like, why do I want to risk this now? What's, what's in it for me? I, I think the, I think the other strategic reason that you start <laughs> here with placement is if you go, so the, the things that we presented you are commonly bigger retailer problems, right? And so if you have a retailer who's smaller in size that may only have one buyer for the entire category, the entire store, you do have, yeah, or the entire store, you do have some play. You could, you could work with that buyer to say, listen, you know, we need 
you know, I'm, I'm doing okay here. I'd like to try us there. I'm going to, you know, kind of help you in whatever way that you deem relevant so that I can go try it. You also refine your story and your placement strategy before you get to kind of big guys, right? Which is also why you start with where do I want to be? Where do I dream about being? Where do I want to be? How do I test out some of these strategies and some smaller players who are willing to work with me before I get to somewhere where, you know, the rules of play are quite complicated and it's hard to do. Well, right? maybe that's a better way to say it too. If you want to test, yeah. you have to test, you test the independence. Correct. Correct. I think the fundamental challenge we're all having, and I think you can see it on the news perpetually these days, we don't have a lot of independence left. Yeah. Correct. So if you do end up getting into the larger box out of the gate, please, for the love of God, please start there. Figure out where you want to be. Yeah. yeah. Because once you lock it in, it's really difficult to unlock. Yeah. It really is. You're, you're not going to wander buyers because you think you've got a great product. All anybody's going to do is look at the success and or failure. And that's going to deem what's going to be happening. So if you pick the wrong place in the wrong store, it can set you back. And I just don't think anybody spend not anybody. I think we're not spending as much time as Phil and I would like you to spend on placement. Where do you want to be in any store? Then what stores do you want to be in? Mm -hmm. And then think it through back through your pricing model that mm -hmm. we just passed. Does it work? Yeah. I mean, you know, if you tie it back that way too, and I, I think that's a really relevant point here is, you know, as you get through placement, then you start thinking about the channels you want to be in, the grocery, the drug, the mass channels, the alternative channels, however you think of it, um, that those layers that we have in price, these layers, well, they change, they, they change a little bit and they, more they change a lot. And then, and then I think the thing that we haven't spent any time at that we won't, right? But is every channel has its own kind of um, the other bubble that should be here is like marketing spend or sure. over and above spend, right? So you know this this kind of stack only gets you to pay to play, right? But you you haven't actually entered any agreements yet. You haven't talked about damages. You haven't talked about marketing spend or O and A spend or listing you know, fees. Yeah, but but all of that has to come into play because as you think about these, once you kind of narrow down on where you want to be and you start working out these things, now you're thinking about what does it cost me to be in a grocery? What does it cost me to be in a local or a small chain where maybe I don't have listing fees, but I have some other things I got to cover? Mm -hmm. And then if I extend out into one of the five, four national players, and it really cost me some coin, can I still afford it? And then does the story and the numbers hang from here to there? Right. Right. It's the and big this works in online two way. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Amazon's got a different structure yeah. than um, like a Walmart, a Walmart or, or a Walmart yeah. or a Costco platform yeah. versus yeah. your own Shopify. Yeah. Yeah. So, so don't kid yourself. It's the same thing. And even when you place it in those worlds, because once we get to promotion, how you talk about your product, that will enforce where, how people think about where it's going to be placed. So it does, it, it, the, the online world is exactly the same, different physical structures, same mentality. Mm -hmm. Think about where you want this to go and who you want to be with important I, I this is this is probably the middle of the presentation because we, well this is what this is what forced no, the presentation is, to be honest yeah, with you. this yeah. is why we why we did this one because this was driving us crazy the last couple yeah. shows yeah yeah but but <laughs> and we think we think you know as you've seen right so we feel passionate about this because we think if you don't think through these things the other the other part that gets really screwed up that we heard a lot of is you know is is you kind of go we've talked about place the other one is is people, right? Um, and and you know, in the four Ps, we you know, product is already something that you've covered, and then the other one is promo, promotions. But we actually talk about that last because your placement, once you decide all of these things, it drives who you talk to about what you want to do. Like, do you need your own salespeople? 
Do you need, um, you know, a salespeople that, that do you need drill um, car? Do you need a van? Do yeah. You need a van? yeah. Do you need a distributor? Do you need, like, we, we have some incredible partners out there, um, you know, from the, the purities of the world to the Matt LeBeau's of the world to, um, you know, oh, to, Patrick, you've got yeah, Indigo, yeah. you've got, like, you got, yeah. you got just tons of people propel yeah. since St. Patrick. You don't even you got so many options out there. Yeah on how to get things moving on this planet. Like you just gotta make sure. But if you wanna know why, like if you wanna know why one and not the other, <clears throat> it's actually, it's it like it comes back to this, right? Is yeah. some are the stronger one without the other is some are smaller and some do other channels. You know, why do you choose um, Tony and his group at Indigo versus a Matt LeBeau versus a, you like, it all is predicated on some of these things, right? Is what do I need? And then what do I, where do I need to go? What do I need to do in those stores, right? And who's the best fit really for matters, right? me? Like, yeah, it really, really matters. So um, I don't think people spend enough time here or yeah. what happens is they'll, they'll get romanced and go to the first yeah. person. And the first person might be the right one. But even most of the, most of these people will tell you, think it through. Well, they don't want a bad match either, right? Like well, if, no, if because you know, the, they, 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 they get out business, of it. But if you know, I, I'll give you an example. So if you if you are a if you're a fresh product, like let's say we stick with the juice thing, right? And and I decide I, I really I've I've got the the numbers down. I've you know I've done everything you guys asked, and I figured it out. And I need <laughs> to be in grocery stores all over the country. Fine, right? But if I go to someone who doesn't distribute or can't do direct to store, for example, which is what a lot of fresh products are, they deliver direct to store. How is that going to help your product, right? Like, how is that going to help you sell? It won't. Um, it, it won't, right? And then what you'll notice is, you know, it just isn't working the way, you know, we hear that a lot, right? Is it's not working the way I thought it would, or I would like them to be more effective. That's probably a minute for you to stop and go back and look at, wait, where, where do I need to be? And then do I have the right people to get me there, right? It's, right. it's pretty important, right? So, yeah. It's a lot, again, it, it's, it's a place you need to spend time because <clears throat> some people do certain things better than others. Some move boxes better than others. Some have salespeople within their distribution that sell better than others. Some brokers are better in, in drug than they are in grocery. Some are generalists and do all relatively well, yeah. right? But you know, yeah. it, it's all of them have cool uh, skill sets yeah. and areas that they excel in versus yeah. other areas, yeah. right? So it's again, it's the right fit. And a lot of this is, you know, you also have to really like them, and they have to like you. Yeah, you really get, if you have a better relationship, chemistry, for sure, there's chemistry that we can't speak to, like. You choose the people that you love, right? Or, or you, everybody loves somebody different. Unless you're like a guy like Matt LeBeau, and everybody loves Matt LeBeau. Um, but, um, you know, but otherwise, yeah, you, you kind of like, you know. But even you love Matt LeBeau. Matt would say there's some categories that. But there's some categories that I may not go to Matt with because I yeah. look and think I don't know if he's a good fit for this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, and I think you do that with all of them. Yeah. Right. I think that's the thing what people have to understand. We're lucky. In Canada, for a lot, of, we do really have, and this is the problem when you name things, right? We have so many good distributors. Like we have so many, we have starred, like we have John Luca, we have Horizon, yeah. Yeah. we've got Pure, like you can go on and on. Like there's so many players. Some are better than others for your particular yeah. thing. So the again, if we go back to the beginning, what happens for the most part? Most will spend all their efforts on the product, which is important, obviously, and then skim through price and placement and the people. And what we're saying is you have to spend probably an equal amount of time here to make sure that it's going to be good. It may slow your process down, and I get that, but the success comes from thinking it through all the way through. And then when you get to the final slides, and then you start talking about promotion. You may as well flip now, I guess, right? Yep. It's it's the next door to part. You don't make this the front. Get your shit together first. Figure out who we're going to, how we're going to get there, where we're going to be. And then you start talking about the different ways to 
now get this product off the shelf. Um, you know, one of the ones that's super relevant in here too, like if you stay with a juice example or any food, we have a lot of food in our audience. Well, we like food. Is, you know, we like food and we have a lot of food in our audiences. This, this one graphic about the demo, um, you kind of need, it's, it's again, one of these things you got to think through, right? Is like demos are, uh, you know, sometimes the only way to get people to understand what you do is for you to give out products so they can taste it. But whether that's in store at a trade show or a board at a trade show, a, a consumer yeah, show. Correct. <laughs> or a trade show. But you've got to think through that too, is when you start picking channels that you want to go, it sounds like a no brainer, but you know, you, you land it, you land it, you know, it's an extreme example. You land at Costco, the Costco demos are really pricey, right? And, and so now you've got to factor that into the way you do costing, right? Is, you know, this part while last is not least, right? Because you still have to think that through. We hear that a lot from food companies who are emerging is that, you know, how time consuming it is to, to get product into the mouths of the consumers that they right. hope to attract, right? And just so you know, this isn't free because a lot of stores don't allow yeah. you to do it. Yeah. A lot of stores will charge you anywhere from, let's say, probably 200 to $400, but it mm -hmm. might be um, dedicated staff who typically mm -hmm. will do demos. So you're going to pay for that. And then you're also going to pay for all the product um, that was sampled. Like you're not going to be able to go in with stuff out of your car and you do it. Some retailers will let you do that, independence potentially. Yeah. But just to be clear, don't, don't assume that you can do all that because you may not be allowed to. There's a, there's a, a really great fast thought from Sasha uh, Ramjani on Poco. Right. right. Um, talking about um, launching demos at Longos. Right. Um, and, and he talks about that. You, if you think about it, Longos is it's not small and it's not big. It's 35 stores in Ontario, 30 ish. I don't know whatever the number is, but even in that case, the things he had to go through to try and make sure that um, you know demos work properly for him was um, challenging. We'll we'll link the What's description. No doubt, I think what he yeah. thought was going to happen, correct, wasn't exactly what happened. Yeah, and I think that's what he probably learned. Because I think that if I remember the part, the fast thought, I think he had almost overextended. Like he had quite a few demos, but with the proximity yeah. wasn't next door to each other. Yeah. So I think there was and like he really this, struggled trying to get to all yeah. the, you know all these demos and and all the places. I mean, if I got it in my head, I think he was doing some of the GTA and then some almost on Hamilton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and they, they were all over. The, I mean, the Longo yeah. stores are all over the place. So yeah, but I mean, again, all good. Yeah, all good. But there's a lot of stuff behind them. Yeah. yeah. Um. Okay. So so and then so that kind of rounds out the four P's. Um. If you have any questions for us or we've generated some strong emotion on this or it's, it's just we're... generated thinking i mean yeah we did this because of things that we saw when we were walking and pitfalls in essence that we figured is that we thought geez and we would and again to me i don't know okay i'll say it again phil people spend a lot of time on the product and there's some wicked products yeah and wicked ideas but they don't always make a business like you have to build in all this other stuff um, to make sure that you're going to be long-term viable and successful because what else do we want? I mean, we want yeah. more Canadian brands and Canadian entrepreneurs cranking it out there, man. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is it. This is the four piece plus one. Um, if there's anything, hit us up. You can find us. Um, our emails are there. You can, yeah. we're That's on cool. all the social medias and, you know, come find us. Um, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching everybody.